Thank you, Michael. Um, I think first off, uh, thank you to the, the fans in Minnesota for creating an amazing atmosphere. You know, it, it's easy to say uh, on a night like tonight, you'll just stay home and sit in front of the TV and stay warm in your living room. But but these fans came out and, and came out with energy and, and noise and really made it a great environment for us to play in. Secondly, just really appreciative of the of the players' mindset in a, in a game like tonight, in a mind in a, a night like tonight. Uh, they they battled through the conditions, but showed the determination and the um, the grit to get a, a strong victory and a, a dominant performance. Uh, in the big picture, our goal in this window was to stay in, in, in second or to move to first place, and it looks like we'll do that um, after tonight. So happy as we move into the next window now, we're, we're in position and it's about closing out in the next window. Looking at the performances of the group, um, a number of guys had really strong performances, but I'd like to single out Luca De La Torre for um, just an excellent, exceptional effort tonight. He was coach's man of the match and, and was all over the field and did a good job. That's the beauty when you give a guy an opportunity, he takes advantage of it. That's a really difficult question to answer. Um, what I would say is that we, we provided um, Honduras and, and the, their staff and the referees with warm weather gear. We provide them with head gear and, um, you know, trying to make it a safe environment for them to play in. It, it, you know, when we go down to those countries and it's 90 degrees and 90% dew point and it's unbearable humidity and guys are getting dehydrated and cramping up and getting heat exhaustion, you know, that's, that's the nature of our competition. When we schedule this game in, in this location, you know, you, ha you have to go by average temperatures, uh, daily average temperatures. And it, it, it was the best guess. We wanted to minimize travel. We, we knew we were going to be playing in cold weather in two of the games. And we figured um, to do it in the third game as well instead of switching climates. Uh, you know, be, the, a cold spell came through and it's something we can't control. But, but all we can do once that happens is, is try to mitigate the, um, the risk by having warm weather gear and, and, um, and going out there and competing. And, and we did that. So it, it's a difficult question to answer, Steve. I hope I, hope I didn't um, avoid it with my answer. No, I, I think that it was an it was important match to keep where we wanted to keep it, to stay where we wanted to stay in the standings. Uh, and that's that was important. And, um, you know, right from the beginning, right from the opening whistle, much like the Costa Rica game, I knew that we were in, in good control. The, the warm up was really good. And we started the game positively. The, the early goal helped. Um, the goal before halftime helped also. But, you know, I felt like we, we had good control of the game and the guys were up for up for the game. Okay. So with Weston, um, you know, he's a guy that, that leads by his performance. I thought, I thought he had an outstanding window. I thought his, you could tell that he, um, he's in big, in big form at Juventus, the way he came into this window and um, he's dominant. And he, you know, I think he's one of the best midfielders in this region, if not the best. So it's, um, it's great to have a strong performance from Weston uh, we've almost come to expect that from him. Regarding Christian, you know, decisions like that are never easy. We still, you know, the, the pregame conversation with him was you, you're still going to affect the game just in a different role. And, um, you know, we we had to do what we thought was was best for the team and, and also put Christian in the best possible position to make an impact. And um, he did that today, and that's all you can ask of a player. I'm surprised you asked that. I was waiting for Sam to ask that question. But, <laughs> I'll, I'll address well, it. Well, we're anyway. sitting next um, to each other, so. <laughs> um, you know, we've been close on set pieces, and it, it, it has been frustrating for for all of us that we haven't scored on, on set pieces in in ten games. And um, you know, we're, we're trying, we're doing our best. Some of the, some of the plays we become really close on, uh, as you saw last week in Canada on, on Sunday in Canada, was was a close opportunity as well. So. Um, and that was, you know, without Kellen serving the balls. But Kellen's a specialist. He's really good at set pieces. It was good to see the execution tonight. And, um, you know, you know, we moved into the plus two now in, in goals um, over qualifying and set pieces. We've given up one. We scored three. So that's always good. Not, not really. I mean, well, I guess the common thread could be away from home. We haven't been as, as – um, we haven't gotten the results that, that we have at – at home. So that's one thing. 
And it's always tricky. There's always different conditions. There's always different circumstances that that make playing on the road in CONCACAF extremely challenging. You know, and we all know that. Um, I knew that as a player, and, and now I know that as a coach. So, but what I'd say is that um, home field is a huge advantage for us. We play really well at home, and and that's a positive thing. You know, the formula for qualifying is to win your home games and um, and have at least a point per game on the road. So that's what we'll try to do next window. Well, all we could do is gather information and watch the guys train and watch what they're doing at their clubs and then envision how they can play for us and then put them in position to perform for us. And, and that's what you ask. You ask guys like Luca when they get the opportunity that they can step up and take advantage of it. And that's what he certainly did. But there's other guys. When you think of Reggie Cannon, um, who, who played a very good game today, was, was relentless on the right-hand side. Ricardo Pepe, I thought, had a, had a good game, even though he didn't score a goal. You know, part of our plan in the window was to get him rest and then use him in, in a night like tonight. So I'm glad to see that. And overall, um, you know, pleased with the group performance. But it's it definitely makes things easier when, when you have guys perform at a high level and you have a number of players to choose from. I thought Jordan Morris was was also gave the team, gave the opponent problems today. So overall, pleased with the performance of the group. You know, I think the hardest thing to do as a coach is to talk to a player and um, and tell him that you support him and you're behind him 100%, and then you don't start him uh, because they the players feel somehow that you're you're not supporting him. And and for Christian, it was a very difficult decision, but I felt it was a decision that was made to put him in the best possible position to make the impact that we know he can make. And that's why when he's in those positions um, on the field, he has the quality to, to make finishes like that and to score goals like that. And that's the impact that, that he made for the group and, and really helped seal the victory for the team. So, you know, it's, it's never easy, um, you know, when you're a player, a high profile player, and you're not in, in the form of your life. And, and that those things are very hard to always capture, especially when you're at a club like, like Chelsea. But he's a guy that means a heck of a lot to this team. He's, you know, one of the top performers in the team over this stretch of time, and he's going to be a, a huge contributor to what we do uh, moving forward. That's for sure. So uh, part of it was just tr training. Uh, we watch, well, we watch him play in his games, and he does a, a very good job um, in his games, keeping the ball moving, connecting passes. The one thing that I agree that we haven't seen is goals and assists from him. And, you know, that's something that we, we look forward to from our midfielders, um, that they can contribute in that, in that aspect. But watching him in training um, throughout the week, you could see that he, was, he got up to speed with the group and then he was ready to, for this challenge. And all you can do is put players in position, then they need to, they need to do the rest. And, um, and he certainly did that. What was the um, other part of your question, Ivis? Sorry, I missed that. It was about Christian. About Christian. Oh, yeah. So, up, you know, if you ask any coach, being up 2 nothing is a terrible lead to have. You, you always want um, you, you want to get up 3 nothing. So it was important that we put him in to get the third goal, and, um, and he did that. Yeah, you know, these guys are, are out there freezing their butts off and, um, and, and really just sacrificing to be there to support the United States of America. And, and there was a long break in time. And, and I told, they asked, can they get a picture? And I said, guys, we'll do it after the game. And then during that time, um, during that long break, I said, hey, let's take advantage of this now. And I quickly went over and, and took a picture with them. And, um, you know, a lot of respect goes out to, to Minnesota United and their staff and U.S. soccer and our staff and putting this game on and getting this game going. Um, the, the conditions were, were adverse, but the field was great. The field played really well. They took good care of it up to this game. Um, you know, they got seats in the stands. They got a great atmosphere going. So overall, you know, in difficult conditions, really proud of, of U.S. soccer staff, Minnesota United staff, but also the players for, for battling through that. It was, it was difficult conditions, and, and they did a great job. It's important. Um, again, we, we want to be in the positive and set pieces. We think that's a big advantage that we have, and we haven't been um, converting our opportunities. But looking you know, at the process of it rather than the results of it, um, we've, had, we've had good opportunities to score, and we just haven't scored. Um, you know, starting with the first game against El Salvador, Miles Robinson has an open header from, from six yards out. 
Um, that that you know could easily have been a goal. Weston in, in the last game had a uh, you know the goalie made a great save, and if he puts it anywhere else, it's probably a goal. So, in terms of the process, I've been happy with both offensive and defensive set pieces, and tonight we got the results of it. We got the we got um, conversion from it. So to get three goals is is always good. It puts us in the positive. Yeah, you know I think when you talk about pressure, I think you're referring to external pressure. Um, and that could be the media pressure. But what I'd say, Jonathan, is that there's no amount of pressure the media can put on me that I'm not putting on myself. And we have very high demands for this program. And we're, we desperately want to get this right and qualify for the World Cup for the players, for the fans, and for our country. The staff puts a ton of work into this. And we're working with a really young team. And when you think now, we're, we're almost at 1.9 points per game. That's pretty darn good, you know. So all we do is keep going, and when we keep putting pressure on ourselves to perform, and that's that's our process. You know, we we look at things, we refine things, and we get better every single day. That's what we're focused on. Yeah, well, I, you know that that's another tough question, and the reason why is because you know you're acting or you're you're asking the question, insinuating that we're the only ones playing in these type of conditions. You know, Canada scheduled the game up in Hamilton, and it was in the teens. And, um, you know, so for us, again, we're trying to minimize travel in this window and trying to keep the, the weather somewhat consistent. And that was our focus. And then and the third thing is we want to win our home games. So, you know, it, it's it, that's a really difficult question for me to answer because for us, um, we see our home field as an advantage and, and playing in conditions that the opponent's not used to also an advantage for us. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, we, it's not common that we play in January, that we have World Cup qualifier, qualifiers in January. And due to COVID, we have to reschedule. We have to, they had to put this January window in. So, you know, I'm not sure if it will continue or not. But I know that we've had some historic wins in adverse conditions. You know, Mexico and Columbus, the Denver game against Costa Rica, and, and these two last games in Columbus and Minnesota have been big wins for the program. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in, in, in other camps, he, in other qualifiers, he, he wore the captain's band as well. Yeah. And in Bo the Bosnia game in December, he wore the captain's armband. He's been a leader since day one with us. And um, and the day one is January of 20 2019. And, um, you know, any specific decisions that we make in one window don't reflect the person standing um, in perpetuity. That can change. And in, for Walker's case, an example of him changing him or it changing him playing in a big game, performing extremely well and holding on to his position. The national team is extremely competitive for, for spots. And when guys come in and perform, you know, they, they keep their spots. And, and Walker's certainly done that. And, and not only that, but his, you know, his demeanor, his mindset on and off the field is really helpful for the group. He has um, experience. But he's also calm, um, and he has a calm intensity to him that really helps the group perform. Ya que nos encontraste, no nos pierdas. Suscríbete a nuestro canal de YouTube de Telemundo Deportes.